Excellent. Happy Friday, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on this Cinco de Mayo Friday because based upon the week in news, we have a lot to drink about. So we are coming to you live from Cellar Angels World Headquarters and there is a lot on our minds. And as I posted earlier today on Facebook, it doesn't really matter what happens in the world, where you fall politically. And this is a country obviously of great diversity. You will need wine. And tonight's wine is on the site right now at CellarAngels.com. And it is a super premium wine from a gentleman named Brian Kane of Sol Rouge. And I'm hearing some, hold on a second in the studio, I'm hearing a lot of feedback. I don't know what that is going on. Hey, <laughs> what's up? How are you? Good to see you. So let's talk a little bit about Cabernet Sauvignon. Let's talk a little bit about Bordeaux. Let's talk a little bit about the Rhone region, because those were all the influences for Brian Kane. Brian Kane is the owner, winemaker of Sol Rouge. It's a side project for Brian. It's his own. Brian is also the winemaker for Howell Mountain Vineyards. Brian also was winemaker of the year in 2015 by a well-respected trade press. So Brian is probably someone you've never heard of, but he has made some fantastic wines. As a matter of fact, at Howell Mountain Vineyards, seven of his wines have scored 91 points or better, for those of you keeping score. And, and that's all by a wine enthusiast. Now, I grew up probably, <laughs> you could maybe say I haven't grown up. Some people would, would debate that. But I grew up reading Wine Spectator. And I've, I, I still have a subscription to Wine Spectator. It's digital. But now I kind of rely a little bit more on Wine Enthusiast, uh, the tasting panel, Wines and Vines, and a whole bunch of other industry trade rags to get all of my information. But when wine enthusiasts gives you 91 points, it means something because all they do is wine. All they are high-end wine folks and they study it internationally and they are the cat's meow, so to speak. Uh, but not a bad gig to have seven of your wines score 91 points or above. So Brian is rocking. And that's one of the great things about wine is these guys that are these under the radar winemakers, they may make wines at higher end places like Howell Mountain Vineyards. But they always have their side projects where they will mix and match, kind of like a chef who is a chef at a high-end restaurant, but then has another restaurant that is a little bit, you know, might seat 20 people as opposed to 120 people. And Brian, when he took over in 2013 at Howell Mountain Vineyards, he actually succeeded quite a few people that are pretty noteworthy. Two that come to mind is James Hall, used to make wine at Howell Mountain Vineyards, and James then went on to Patson Hall, which uh, recently was just sold, so hats off to you guys. And Donald Pats, I know, is uh, probably watching from a beach, but uh, hopefully Donald's doing well. I and mean, he's, he's not done in the wine industry, so don't think they're going away anywhere soon. And also, uh, Dave Finney of the Prisoner fame used to make wine at Howell Mountain Vineyards. So Brian is in good steed as it relates to wine. Speaking of steed, all right, this may be Cinco de Mayo, but for some of us, more importantly, it is the eve of the greatest two minutes in sports. Tomorrow is the Kentucky Derby. Huge Derby fan. As a matter of fact, hmm. In our headquarters, we have some Derby glasses. There they all are. I don't know if you can see those. But I'll grab some. You know, here's a, 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 1920, a 1975 Derby glass. Mint juleps. Here's a, oh, that one's even more recent. 1980 something or other. But we, we're big derby fans at Cellar Angels. Uh, and there will probably be a mint julep or two tomorrow. But let's talk about the wine. I want to talk to you a little bit about the Sol Rouge. So there's the label. Fairly nondescript. It's, it's, it's just clean, elegant, very much like the wine. Brian's influenced by Bordeaux and the Rhone. So those two areas of the world, especially in France uh, and compared to old world, new world, they're more subtle with regards to their flavor profiles. They're not going to hit you over the head with fruit uh, or an oak two by four. But what I will tell you is that the bouquet on this is actually just really, really interesting because I get uh, dried herbs, uh, a lot of earthiness to it, a lot of just really fresh uh, forest floor type stuff. So if you've ever walked in the woods and you 
take that inhalation and you can smell the fresh air and you can smell some of the moisture and the humidity and you smell the tree bark and you smell all of the, the, the minerals that go into mother nature when you're out in nature, that is coming through in the glass. Uh, Brian owns, as I mentioned, Sol Rouge and Sol Rouge is located just north of Napa in the Red Hills AVA. The neat thing about this is Brian's kind of a specialist in mountain fruit. Sol Rouge itself is at 1800 feet. Hold on a second. So at 1800 feet, you're above the fog line. So you have just these wonderful vines basking in the sun uh, above the fog line, just having a good time baiting. And Brian is one of those folks who, he, he actually was in the software industry and now he's into winemaking. But he's one of those, I don't wanna say it's new, but he's just, his philosophy is don't screw with it, all right? Very non-interventional, very old world winemaking philosophy. Uses native yeasts for the inoculation process. And, and that's important because you, when you're making wines of this caliber in these very, very tiny, tiny production, okay, Brian only made 100 cases of this, 100. That, that's it's not a lot of wine. So. You, you don't want to manipulate it. You want whatever happened with Mother Nature that year to shine through. And, and that's actually what, what Brian does. Uh, the Sol Rouge that is on the site right now is the 2011. It was aged 30 months. 30 months in all French oak, 100% French oak, 25% of it is new. French oak a little bit more subtle than the American oak, which is, tends to be a little racier. I'm sorry, is there a question? Are we getting... Oh, you do it. Good to see you. Anything? Okay, no, good. Uh, just want to make certain we want to be responsive to the people that are asking questions. But at 100 cases, there's, there's not a lot to make. There's not a lot to screw up. So if you make a mistake, you lose half the batch. And we can't have that happen. So color, just deep, dark, uh, almost has kind of a blueberry tint to it, but certainly a blue, black, raspberry, uh, again, the BV7 from Bottega del Vino, I, I can smell it from here. It, the, the aroma and the bouquet is just jumping out of the glass. Uh, fantastic. It is like a little walk in nature. It, it really is something special. And that's, I mean, the, the funny, we, we pulled the cork out about a half hour or so ago, let it breathe a little bit. And the first thing you smell when you smell the cork is barrel room. And, and barrel room meaning that if you've ever been on a tasting in Napa, and there's some folks out there that do these very, very well, uh, go to The Wine Thief. Go, go see David Grega. Go see Jason Moore. Go see Ignacio Degadillo. Go see these gentlemen, and, and they will take you on different tastings, and they will show you different things in barrels. Uh, but when you walk into that barrel room, you can, you can smell kind of uh, the freshness of the wine, the, the, the texture and the oak that's in the room, French oak especially. But then when you pull a cork on some of those bottles, as senses will sen sometimes do, specifically smell, it will transport you right back to that moment. And so when we, when we lifted this cork today, it was actually fascinating because you get instantly transmitted right back to a great barrel room, thieving some wines out of the barrel, uh, pouring them in a glass, may not be ready yet, could have been last year's vintage or a couple years ago, or it could be a library wine. But if you get in touch with the right people and we can help you do that at Cellar Angels, uh, they will give you a wine tasting experience that you can't get. So that's one of the great things about Napa Valley and, and, and Sonoma as well. That, that area is uh, par excellence. It's just fantastic. And the neat thing is that they're so passionate about their craft, especially the small boutique producers. Most of them aren't interested in making 50,000 cases, let alone a thousand cases or five thousand cases they just want to make the best wine our job is to get that into your hands so because they don't have distribution across the country they need seller angels they need seller angels to get it into your hands and they do it because they're also very philanthropic and speaking of philanthropy let's raise a glass to our newest charity partner uh, the press release is gonna probably come out next week and it is on the website right now at sellerangels.com but we want to raise a glass to folds of honor Folds of Honor is just an absolutely stunning partner and stunning organization because they've been around since 2007. 
And essentially what they do is they provide scholarships to spouses and children of fallen and disabled military personnel. So these are scholarships for education that put the spouse and or the children through high school, college, and it's extremely important because I, I can't even imagine, I mean, they've paid the ultimate sacrifice and the, the very least we can do, and we're humbled to be able to do it, is buy wine, check a box and support them. Folds of Honor has a huge following uh, and we're excited to, to make wines available to them, especially with the PGA Tour. They have a great event coming up on Memorial Day, which we could not figure out logistically how to participate and they were asked to, but Trust me, in 2018, Cellar Angels is going to have a big role in their major league national event every year, the Patriot Cup. And if you've seen any of the stuff Folds of Honor does, they just recently did a NASCAR event about a month or so ago. They do things very, very well. They're a top-notch organization. We are beyond humbled to be a partner with them. And so now anytime you buy wine from Cellar Angels, check the Folds of Honor box, you are actually earmarking proceeds to go help provide scholarships, educational scholarships, to the spouses or the children of either fallen or disabled military veterans. It's not a bad thing to do. Let's talk a little bit about some cool people. I always like to mention Joe Roberts from One Wine Dude because his blog is one of the best. The Gray Report, G-R-A-Y, is a great blog with Blake Gray. Uh, you should absolutely have Chicago people, you should have your milk in the morning. And I'm not talking about the beverage, I'm talking about Jenny Mikalski on Fox doing the traffic. She is an absolute riot and she is a person that you need to follow because she's a rising superstar, a lot like Brian Kane at Soul Rouge. She's actually, Brian is a superstar, but going beyond that. And there's a, a, a company that is called Onward Agency. And Onward Agency does the Seller Angels website. Today in a lickety split instant, they found an error that was really spreading through the website, changing fonts and things like that, that just did not make the elegance of our website pristine. Uh, they were on it and they had it fixed in probably 40 minutes. You don't get service like that. And I'm happy to tell you about Onward Agency. So if, if you're flying, we've seen the type of service you get from some of the airlines, not good. But if you're drinking wine, you'd be hard pressed to do better than the Sol Rouge and you'd be hard pressed to do better than Onward Agency as a web design digital marketing company. So with that, I'm gonna wish you, uh, bid you adieu and tell you I want you to have a safe weekend. Cinco de Mayo, a lot of, lot of celebrating going on. Kentucky Derby's tomorrow. I hope your horses come in. The So Rouge is outstanding. You guys are great. Thanks everyone at Folds of Honor. Have a wonderful Friday and a safe weekend. Cheers everyone.